The sun was just starting to peek over the horizon, casting a pale orange glow across the eerily still desert landscape as Samantha Ray gunned the engine of her dusty Land Rover. Her green eyes, usually sparkling with keen intelligence and wry humor, were shadowed with grim determination as she sped toward the coordinates scrawled on the yellowed map fluttering on the passenger seat. Her father's map, though? The one she'd found tucked between the pages of his battered field journal after, after they pulled his body from the wreckage of his overturned jeep three months ago at the base of a ravine in the Peruvian Andes. The one that had led him on a wild goose chase for most of Samantha's childhood, chasing whispers of a legendary Incan artifact across remote corners of the globe. The silver mask of the moon god, forged from a fallen meteorite, and imbued with the power to commune with the celestial realms, or so the myth went. A priceless relic of a lost civilization, and Richard Ray's white whale. The obsession that had ultimately claimed his life. Now that same obsession pulsed in Samantha's blood as she followed in his ill-fated footsteps, desperate for answers. For closure. For some tangible piece of the father she'd barely known, too consumed by his esoteric pursuits to spare much thought for his only daughter. A daughter whose own fascination with the secrets of the past had bloomed in his absence, leading her to follow him into the high-stakes world of archaeology. To surpass him if she was being brutally honest, driven by an unspoken need to prove herself. To finally win the approval of a man who'd never quite seen her, even when she was standing right in front of him. Grief and old resentment mingled, hot and bitter on her tongue, as the tires ate up the miles. Samantha shook her head sharply, dislodging the memories. She couldn't afford the distraction. Not today. Not when she was so close to the truth. As if conjured by her thoughts, a towering mesa appeared on the shimmering horizon, rising from the sand like an ancient sentinel. Heart suddenly pounding. Samantha checked the map again confirming the formation matched the one her father had sketched and labeled with the coordinates she now raced toward. This was it. It had to be. The X that marked the spot on his decades-long treasure hunt. The breakthrough discovery that had eluded him until now. And she would be the one to make it, to cement the Ray name in archaeological history. To prove to her father, even across the grave, that she was every bit the scholar, the adventurer, that he was, no matter the cost. Samantha pulled to a juddering stop at the base of the mesa, the engine ticking as it cooled. The air held a hushed stillness, as if the whole world was holding its breath. Waiting. She was just reaching for her pack, mentally reviewing the climb ahead, when a sound shattered the silence. The crunch of tires on sand, growing steadily louder. Her head snapped up, eyes narrowing at the cloud of dust being churned in the distance, heralding another vehicle's rapid approach. Another seeker of her father's secrets. Friend or foe, she couldn't say. But Samantha had never been one to share the glory. And she certainly wasn't about to start now. Her jaw clenched as she leapt from the jeep, already racing toward a narrow crevice cleaving the stone face. If she could reach it before her uninvited guest, the crunch of boots on gravel, just behind froze her in place, one hand already curled around the flare gun at her belt. She turned slowly, warily, to face the interloper, and found herself staring into a pair of startlingly familiar blue eyes, as rich and fathomless as the lapis lazuli adorning the silver mask she sought. Hello, Samantha. A ghost of a smile played at the edges of his sensual mouth, sending an unbidden shiver down her spine. Fancy meeting you here. Declan, she breathed, momentarily drowning in a flood of memories. Late nights pouring over parchment maps, the spiced scent of his cologne filling her senses. Furtive glances across candlelit campsites, unspoken desires crackling in the desert air. That one explosive kiss, seared into her very soul before he walked out of her life for good her father's protege, his second shadow, and now, it seemed, her rival, Declan Cross, the one man who could unravel everything with a crooked grin and a knowing look, the last person she'd expected, or wanted, to see. What are you doing here? 
Samantha demanded, voice shakier than she liked. His smile widened, but there was little warmth in it. Same thing you are, I expect. He nodded to the narrow path snaking up the mesa. Looking for answers. For a closure. She swallowed hard. This has nothing to do with you. My father was my mentor, Declan cut in sharply, an edge beneath the practice charm. More of a father to me than he stopped looking away. When he met her gaze again, there was steel in those blue depths. I'm not here to argue, Samantha. I'm here to finish what he started, with or without you. Anger and resignation warred within her. Of course this would happen. Of course he would turn up now, a living reminder of everything she'd tried to leave behind, of feelings she couldn't afford, then or now. Fine, she bit out. But I'm in charge. We do this my way. Understood? A ghost of their old banter glinted in his eyes. Yes, ma'am. She slung her pack over her shoulders, already striding toward the fissure in the rock face. Try to keep up. The climb was treacherous, the narrow path crumbling underfoot as they ascended. Samantha could feel Declan's gaze burning into her back, his presence as overwhelming as the brutal Peruvian sun. Memories battered at her concentration, whispered confessions under a canopy of stars, the brush of calloused fingers against her cheek. The searing press of his lips, the taste of forbidden fruit. She pushed them down, locking them away with the rest of her girlish dreams. They had no place here. Not anymore. By the time they reached the top, Samantha's lungs were burning, her muscles screaming in protest. But none of that mattered as her eyes fell on the cave, mouth yawning before them, a slash of impenetrable shadow like a wound in the earth. The hair on the back of her neck prickled, every instinct screaming that this was it. The culmination of her father's life's work. Of her own desperate quest for meaning in his death. Declan moved to stand beside her, so close she could feel the heat radiating off his sun-bronzed skin. Ready? As I'll ever be. In unison, they clicked on their headlamps and stepped into the waiting dark, the cool air raising goosebumps on Samantha's sweat-slick skin. The beam sliced through the gloom, illuminating rough-hewn walls covered in ancient petroglyphs, spirals and zigzags and stylized animal figures, their meanings tantalizingly out of reach. And there, at the far end of the chamber, a stone plinth stood, incongruously pristine amidst the rocks and rubble. Atop it, something glinted in the lamplight, something silver and achingly familiar, seared into Samantha's memory from her father's sketches and fevered ramblings. The silver mask of the moon god. Samantha's breath caught. After all this time, all the dead ends and false hopes. Could it really be this simple? Declan exhaled beside her, the sound unnaturally loud in the pressing quiet. I can't believe it. He was right all along. They approached cautiously, barely daring to breathe. Samantha's heart pounded, her palms slick on the straps of her pack. Just a few more steps and it would all be over. The answer to a decades-old riddle, quite literally within reach. Declan's fingers closed around the mask a split second before her own, sending a jolt of electricity arcing up her arm. Their eyes met across the plinth, the same shock and wonder reflected in cerulean blue and emerald green. And then, with a soft snick like a lock sliding home, the stone beneath their feet shuddered and began to sink, ancient gears grinding to life with a tooth-rattling groan. Dread wrapped icy fingers around Samantha's thundering heart as the floor fell away, plunging them into a void that seemed to have no bottom. Her scream mingled with Declan's shout as they tumbled down, down, into a darkness deeper than myth. Into the abyss, the silver mask clutched between them like a lover's promise, like a curse like their only salvation, or their final damnation. The last thing Samantha felt before the black swallowed her whole was Declan's calloused palm pressed against her own. Familiar and foreign all at once, a tether in the void. Darkness. Pressing. Absolute. It swaddled Samantha like a shroud, smothering her screams as she plummeted through the void. For a sickening eternity, there was nothing but the rush of dank air, the hammering of her pulse in her ears, 
and the solid grip of Declan's hand around hers, an anchor in the abyss. Then, with a bone-jarring thud, they hit bottom, the impact driving the air from Samantha's lungs. She lay stunned, gasping, every nerve alive and screaming. Beside her, Declan groaned, the sound gritty with pain. Sam. His voice was strained, urgent. Samantha, are you all right? She managed a nod before realizing he couldn't see it in the pitch dark. I think so. You? Been better. She could hear him shifting, testing limbs for damage. Where the hell are we? Good question. Gingerly, Samantha sat up, fumbling for her headlamp. By some miracle, it had stayed clipped to her belt, and she switched it on, squinting as the beam cut through the gloom. They were in a cavern, low-ceilinged and oppressively humid. Stalactites hung from above like stained teeth, water dripping from their points to plink into fathomless pools. The walls were carved with more of the spiraling petroglyphs from the chamber above, but down here, they somehow looked sinister. Ominous. Declan hissed out of breath. What is this place? Samantha shook her head, fighting down a wave of claustrophobia. Some kind of hidden chamber. The real resting place of the mask, I'd guess. At the mention of the artifact, they both glanced around, spotting its gleam a few feet away. Declan scooped it up, turning it over in his hands with something like reverence. All these years, he murmured. All the stories he told me as a boy, I never dreamed. Samantha's throat tightened, old grief and fresher betrayal warring in her chest. You never said that he meant that much to you. Declan looked up, meeting her gaze. In the stark light, his eyes were fathomless, unreadable. Would it have mattered? You were always so determined to do things your own way. To be better than him? The truth of it stung. Can you blame me? He was never there, Declan. Never had time for anything but the next horizon. The next ghost to chase, while his living, breathing daughter waited in the wings. He loved you, Declan said quietly in his own way. You were his whole world, Sam. Why do you think he pushed so hard? Why he needed to be the best. To prove himself. To outrun the demons forever snapping at his heels. The same demons that had driven him to an early grave, and Declan into her life. Samantha looked away, blinking back sudden tears. We should find a way out of here. But even as she said it, a low rumble shook the cavern, sending pebbles skittering across the floor. Dust sifted from the ceiling, stinging Samantha's eyes. Declan shot to his feet, alarm etching his features. That can't be good. Another rumble, longer this time. The puddles rippled, dancing in the quivering light. And there, at the edge of the shadows, movement, sinuous and undulating, drawing closer with each shuddering breath of the earth. Samantha moved without thought, snatching the flare gun from her belt. Declan! He was already reaching for her, free hand closing around her wrist as he thrust the silver mask into his pack. Run! Run! They plunged headlong into the dark Samantha's heart, lodged in her throat. Behind them, over the thunder of the collapsing cavern, she heard it. A hiss, sibilant and razor-edged the whisper of scales on stone. And then it emerged, its bulk filling the tunnel, blotting out the dying light. A serpent, gargantuan and black as a starless night, with eyes like pools of molten gold. It fixed them with a baleful stare, tongue flickering between scimitar fangs, tasting their terror on the fetid air. A guardian. An abomination sprung from nightmares to ancient to name, summoned by their trespass summoned by the mask. Samantha's blood turned to ice as realization crashed over her. All the legends, all the fragmented whispers of a great and terrible power bound to the silver relic. Whispers her father had chased to his doom. They weren't just stories. The serpent reared back, hood flaring, venom dripping from its fangs to sizzle on the stone. Samantha aimed the flare gun with shaking hands, the red eye of the muzzle wavering. Sam. Declan's fingers dug into her wrist, his voice ragged with fear. Samantha, it's no use. 
We have to weigh. The serpent lunged, a black blur of scales and fury. Samantha screamed, squeezing the trigger. The flare burst forth in a starburst of crimson, searing her retinas. It struck the creature dead center, erupting in a gout of hissing sparks and smoke. The serpent shrieked, coiling in on itself as flames licked along its hide. But it was far from vanquished. Those molten eyes fixed on them once more, alight with primal rage. With hunger. Declan wrenched her back, dragging her further into the twisting dark. Damn it, Sam, come on. They ran, stumbling and half-falling, the serpent's screams echoing in their ears. The tunnels turned, doubled back, seemed to shift and change with a malevolent will of their own. As if the very earth had risen up against them, a living labyrinth bent on trapping them forever in its stony coils. Samantha's lungs burned, her muscles screaming for respite. But there could be no rest, no surrender. Not with the serpent's hiss growing louder at their backs, the vibrations of its pursuit shaking dust from the ceiling with every grating slide of its bulk. They clawed their way through the dark, hands clasped, following the faintest whisper of moving air. The promise of escape, of light, of life, beyond this crushing void that threatened to swallow them whole. Just as that promise swelled to a frantic hope in Samantha's chest, the ground fell away again sending them tumbling into empty space. They landed hard, skidding across a surface that was blessedly flat and dry, the serpent's furious hiss receding above. Samantha rolled to her knees, casting her light around wildly. They were in another chamber, this one so vast the beam failed to find the far walls. The air was different here, cool and dry, scented not with loam and decay, but with a strange, pungent spice that made her head swim. What? Where are we? Declan panted beside her, one arm thrown up against the sudden glare. As Samantha's eyes adjusted, she saw them. Painted on the soaring walls from floor to distant ceiling, a riot of colors and shapes and stylized figures acting out an ancient, awful narrative. She moved closer, dread a leaden weight in her gut. It was no mere mural. No primitive artwork, but a warning a prophecy of bloodshed and fire, etched in pigment and terror. At its heart, a silver mask leered down at her, eyes like black holes pulling her into its orbit. The same mask now nestled in Declan's pack, heavy with secrets and damnation. It's the story, she whispered through numb lips. The story of the mask, and the god it was made to contain. Declan moved to her side, squinting at the faded glyphs. I don't understand. What god? What does this have to do with? Wet. He froze mid-sentence, breath-catching audibly. Samantha followed his gaze to a scene near the bottom of the fresco, dread cresting to horror in her chest. Two figures, a man and a woman, knelt before the mask in supplication. Their faces were upturned, rapturous, and eerily familiar. With mounting nausea, Samantha recognized the strong jaw the flashing blue eyes, the tumble of flame-bright hair, features as familiar as her own, immortalized in pigment and legend. It was them. Declan and Samantha, or some uncanny echo, captured on the ancient stone. Their likenesses, their very fates, bound to a relic forged from fallen stars and darkness beyond time. Above the painted figures, the serpent coiled, rendered in slashes of deepest black, waiting to strike, to drag them down to a realm of shadow and anguished screams. Samantha reeled back, bile searing her throat. This couldn't be real. Some trick of the dark, the thin air, her own sleep-deprived mind rebelling under the strain of grief and obsession. But Declan saw it too. He reached for her, eyes wide and haunted in the spectral light. Sam. Before he could say more, could voice the impossible truth etched before them in stone and damnation, a sound cut through the hush. A sound that froze the blood in Samantha's veins, stopped her heart dead in her chest. From the tunnels above, the serpent's shrieks had changed, modulated into something almost... human. A ululating wail of rage and ancient hunger that echoed from the painted walls, from the very earth below their feet. And beneath it, 
woven through it like a strand of pure darkness. Her father's voice, twisted in agony, in ecstasy, raised in an endless scream that went on and on, fraying the edges of reality, calling her name, Samantha. It hissed from the forsaken depths, from the abyss that gaped at the heart of the mask's terrible legend. Samantha, join me. Samantha clapped her hands over her ears, sinking to her knees as that awful keening filled her head, her heart drowning out all else. Declan was shouting, shaking her, his face a pale oval of terror as the darkness gathered, as the serpent's coils glinted at the edge of the light. But she was falling, falling into a void beyond fear, beyond salvation, into eyes that burned like funeral pyres, a grin that split the dark like a wound, into black scales and silver light, and the terrible truths she'd spent a lifetime outrunning, finally risen to claim their due. The mask had called her here, had chosen her, damned her, from the moment she first drew breath, just as it had damned her father, just as it would damn them all, in a rite of blood and shadow as old as time. A rite that demanded a sacrifice, demanded her. The darkness took her then, and she went into it smiling, into a fate carved in prophecy and stone, the circle finally complete. The mask whispering her name with a thousand serpent tongues as oblivion swallowed her whole. Darkness, absolute and devouring, pressed in from all sides. It filled Samantha's lungs, her mind, her very soul, until she was certain she would shatter under its immense weight. Distantly, she could hear Declan shouting her name, feel his hands on her shoulders, shaking her. But he was fading, his voice receding like a dream upon waking, swallowed by the void that pulled her down, down, into a chasm of primal terror and aching loss. In that abyss, time lost all meaning, Seconds stretched into eons, measured only by the frantic drum of her heart, the rasp of her breath in her ears. She was falling, sinking, the world she knew slipping away like mist through grasping fingers. Until without warning, the darkness parted. Like a theater curtain sweeping back, it revealed a stage awash in amber light, flickering with shadows that leapt and twisted in a macabre dance. Samantha blinked, disoriented, as shapes resolved themselves from the gloom. Rough, hewn stone walls, draped with moth-eaten tapestries, guttering torches set in rusted sconces. And there, at the center of the chamber, an altar, ancient and stained with the rust of ages. Atop it, glinting in the spectral light, lay the silver mask of the moon god. But it was no longer inert, no mere relic of a forgotten age. It pulsed with a sickly green energy, writhing like a living thing. Tendrils of darkness unfurled from its empty eyes, its leering mouth, reaching for her with a hunger that transcended flesh, transcended reason. Samantha, it whispered, and the voice was her father's, twisted almost beyond recognition. You came, just as I knew you would. Dad, the word caught in her throat jagged with disbelief and a wild, desperate hope. How, where are we? The in-between? Richard Ray stepped from the shadows, and Samantha recoiled. He was as she remembered him, tall and broad-shouldered, with her same flame-bright hair now streaked with silver. But his eyes, they burned with a fevered light, a madness that sent ice skittering down her spine. The veil between worlds, where the mask's power flows unchecked. He smiled, and in the sputtering torchlight, it was a death's head grin. I've been waiting for you, Samantha. Waiting so long. She shook her head, fighting the urge to back away. This wasn't right. It couldn't be real. Her father was dead, lost, his secrets buried with him in an unmarked grave halfway around the world. How is this possible? she demanded, hating the quaver in her voice. You died. I saw your body. I... Did you? Richard cocked his head, considering. Or did you see what the mask wanted you to see? He gestured to the artifact, its surface roiling like a storm-tossed sea. It's more than a relic, Samantha. 
more than a treasure to be unearthed and catalogued. It's a key. A doorway to realms beyond imagining. He stepped closer, and Samantha caught a whiff of something rank and cloying. Decay, overlaid with the coppery tang of blood. When I found it all those years ago, I thought I could control it. Harness its power for my own ends. A bitter laugh. But you can't control a god, Samantha. You can only serve it. Feed it. Horror rose like bile in her throat. Feed it. How? With blood. Richard's eyes glittered, feral and far away. With sacrifice. It's the only way to appease it, to tap into its true potential. He was close now, close enough to touch. Close enough for Samantha to see the ravages of time, and something far worse etched into his face. The face she'd last seen in a casket, waxy and still under the harsh lights of a mortuary. That's why I had to go, Samantha. His voice was softer now, almost tender. Why I had to leave you. The mask. It demands everything. Consumes everything. There can be no divided loyalties. No ties to the world of flesh and bone. Samantha's heart seized, understanding crashing over her in a frigid wave. The long absences. The missed birthdays. The forgotten promises. A little girl waiting by the window, watching the drive for headlights that never came. He'd left her long before his supposed death. Left her for this. For the siren song of silver and shadow, the promise of power beyond the veil. Grief and rage warred in her chest, tearing at the barely healed wounds of abandonment and loss. She wanted to scream, to rage, to pound her fists against this specter that wore her father's face like an ill-fitting mask. But, before she could form the words, give voice to the anguish boiling up inside her, Richard spoke again. And this time, there was no mistaking the hunger in his voice, the anticipation. Now it's your turn, Samantha. He held out a hand, palm up, beckoning. Your birthright. I brought you into this world for one purpose. Tit the mask as your own. To feed it, as I have. As our ancestors did, down through the long centuries. Samantha stepped back, revulsion rising like gorge in her throat. No, no. I won't. I'm not like you. I could never lie. Oh, but you are. Richard's smile sharpened, turned sly. It's in your blood, Samantha. Just as it's in mine. The same darkness. The same hunger. Why do you think you were drawn to the mask? Why you couldn't rest until you held it in your hands? He leaned in, voice dropping to a conspirator's whisper. You felt it, didn't you? The moment you saw it. That pull. That need. Like a hole inside you that could never be filled. Never be satisfied. Samantha shook her head, denying, even as a traitorous part of her whispered the truth of it. The obsession that had driven her, consumed her, just as it had consumed her father. The bone-deep certainty that she would never be whole, never be free, until the mask was hers. No, she choked out, backing away. I won't do it. I won't be what you are. What it wants me to be. Richard's eyes hardened, disappointment, and something colder, crueler, flickering in their depths. You don't have a choice, Samantha. The mask has chosen you, just as it chose me. Just as it will choose your children, and their children, unto the last generation. He reached for her, fingers curled like claws. One way or another, you will feed it. You will take your place at the altar, and the cycle will begin anew. Samantha stumbled back, heart pounding, bile scorching her throat. This couldn't be happening. It had to be another trick. Another illusion conjured by the mask to torment her, to break her run pond sea. And then, cutting through her rising panic like a blade, came a voice. A voice she knew, in the marrow of her bones. A voice that promised safety, salvation, even as the darkness closed in. Samantha! Declan, distant but achingly real, tearing through the veil of shadow and deceit. Samantha, it's not real. None of this is real. You have to wake up. You have to fight it. Fight? I'd. Yes. 
She could do that. She'd been fighting all her life. Fighting to be seen, to be heard, to be more than just Richard Ray's daughter, the heir to his obsession. Fighting to carve her own path, to build a life free from the long shadow of his absence. She wouldn't stop now. Not even with the mask itself whispering in her father's voice, promising power, promising release. Not even with the weight of generations pressing down on her, a destiny written in blood and silver. Samantha set her jaw, raised her head, met her father's burning gaze with an inferno of her own. No, Gal, I won't do it. I won't be your sacrifice, your pawn. She took a step forward, then another, until she was close enough to feel the heat of him, the sickly sweet stench of corruption. I am Samantha Ray Dot, daughter of Richard and Elizabeth. Archaeologist. Dollar. Die. Explorer. Dot. But I am not, and never will be, a slave to your twisted legacy. With that, she shoved past him, past the altar with its writhing cargo, toward the source of Daeklin's voice. Toward the only light in this realm of shadow and lies. Samantha, no. Richard's roar shook the chamber, sent the torches guttering. You can't escape it. You can't escape me. But she was already running, flying, the darkness parting before her like a living thing. Declan's voice grew louder, clearer, a lifeline drawing her up and out of the abyss. Until, with a bone-jarring wrench, she broke through, fell headlong into a tangle of limbs and labored breath, Declan's arms coming around her like a shield against the dark. I've got you, he murmured into her hair, over and over. I've got you, Sam. You're safe. You're safe. But even as she clung to him, let his solid warmth anchor her to reality. Samantha knew it wasn't true. Knew it in the marrow of her bones, in the dark corners of her heart, where the mask's call still echoed. They weren't safe. They would never be safe, not until they unraveled the truth behind her father's fate, behind the mask's terrible hold on her family, stretching back generations into the mists of time. A truth that might demand more than she was willing to give, more than she could ever hope to survive. But she was a ray, stubborn, reckless, bound by blood to a legacy that threatened to consume her whole. And she wouldn't rest wouldn't stop until she faced it head on, until she stared into the heart of the abyss, and it blinked first. They stumbled through the darkness, Declan's arm tight around Samantha's waist, her weight sagging against him with each leaden step. The tunnels seemed to go on forever, winding and twisting like a serpent's coils, the dank air thick with the stench of decay and something darker, more insidious. Fear, primal and choking, the kind of fear that sank its teeth into the hindbrain, that turned blood to ice and marrow to water. The kind of fear that came from brushing against something ancient, unknowable. Something that hungered. Samantha could still feel it, even now. The pull of the mask, its siren song humming in her veins, in the secret places of her heart where the shadows gathered. It was a part of her, woven into her very DNA like a cancer a curse. Her father's legacy, passed down through blood and bone and whispered madness. Declan's voice, rough with exertion and barely lesh terror, cut through the suffocating darkness. We have to keep moving. Have to get out of here before. He didn't finish, didn't need to. They both knew what lurked behind them, what nipped at their heels with every fractured breath. The mask, hungry and relentless, the specter of her father, twisted almost beyond recognition by the artifact's insidious power. And something else. Something far older and more malevolent. The god the mask had been forged to contain, now stirring in its ancient slumber, drawn by the scent of fresh prey. Samantha shuddered, bile rising in her throat. She couldn't give in to it, couldn't let the fear consume her. She had to be strong, had to keep putting one foot in front of the other, even as exhaustion dragged at her limbs and despair clawed at her mind. For Declan. For herself. For the chance, however slim, of a future free from the long shadow of her father's sins. They rounded a corner 
and suddenly, blessedly, there was light up ahead. Not the sickly green glow of the mask, but something warmer, more inviting. Sunlight, filtering down through a crack in the cavern ceiling, dust motes dancing in its golden beam. Samantha's heart leapt, hope kindling in her chest for the first time since they descended into this nightmare. Declan, look! A way out! He grunted, picking up the pace, half dragging her along with him. The light grew brighter as they approached, the tang of fresh air chasing away the cloying stench of the tunnels. Just a little further, just a few more steps. And then, without warning, the ground beneath their feet gave way. One moment they were running, reaching, the promise of escape tantalizingly close. The next, they were falling, plummeting through empty space as the world crumbled around them. Samantha screamed, the sound ripped from her throat by sheer primal terror. She clawed at the air, at Declan, at anything that might slow her descent. But there was nothing, only the rush of wind and the sickening lurch of gravity claiming its due. They hit the ground hard, the impact driving the air from Samantha's lungs. Painting exploded through her, whiting out her vision, turning her thoughts to static. For a long, horrifying moment, she couldn't move, couldn't breathe could only lie there in the dark and wait for oblivion to claim her. But it didn't come. Slowly, agonizingly, sensation returned. The cold press of stone against her cheek. The metallic taste of blood on her tongue. The weight of Declan's body half covering hers, his labored breathing harsh in the stillness. Declan? She croaked, voice cracking on the syllables. Are you, are you okay? A beat of silence, then a groan, low and pained. Define okay. Relief crashed through her, dizzying in its intensity. He was alive. Hurt, but alive. She hadn't lost him, hadn't lost her only anchor in this madness. With a titanic effort, Samantha pushed herself up onto her elbows, blinking away the spots dancing across her vision. They were in another chamber, smaller than the last its walls rough-hewn and glistening with moisture. The shaft of sunlight was gone, replaced by a pervasive, inky darkness that seemed to press against her from all sides. And there, in the center of the room, was the altar. The same altar from her vision, ancient and stained with the rust of ages. The same altar where her father had stood, offering her up like a lamb to the slaughter. But it was empty now bare stone mocking her with its very presence. The mask was gone, vanished as if it had never been. Samantha's heart seized, a sudden certainty crystallizing in the pit of her stomach. This was it. The final piece of the puzzle, the last step in the twisted game her father had set in motion all those years ago. The mask had led them here, to this place, for a reason. A reason that filled her with a dread so profound, it was almost paralyzing. Declan stirred beside her, pushing himself upright with a hiss of pain. Where, where are we? I don't know, Samantha whispered, the words ashes on her tongue. I, uh, I think, I think we're exactly where it wants us to be. He followed her gaze to the altar, understanding and horror dawning in his eyes. Sam, no. Whatever you're thinking, no. We have to get out of here. We have to well. We can't. The certainty of it settled over her like a shroud, heavy and inescapable. Don't you see, Declan? This is the end game. This is what it's all been leading to. She pushed to her feet, swaying slightly as her battered body protested the movement. Slowly, inexorably, she began to move toward the altar, each step leaden, each breath a battle. My whole life. I've been running from this. From him. From the destiny he tried to force on me. Her voice was barely above a whisper, but it seemed to echo in the cavernous space, bouncing off the damp stone. But I can't run anymore. I have to face it. Have to end it, once and for all. Samantha, stop. Declan lurched to his feet, staggering after her. You don't have to do this. We can find another way. We can why but she was already at the altar, her hands hovering over the cold stone. 
In the gloom, she could just make out the remnants of the ancient symbols carved into its surface. Symbols of power, of sacrifice, of a hunger that could never be sated. Symbols that called to something deep within her. Something dark and primal and terrifyingly familiar. I'm sorry, Declan. Samantha turned to face him, tears burning hot tracks down her cheeks. I'm sorry for everything. For dragging you into this. For not being strong enough to I. Her words cut off as a sudden, blinding pain lanced through her skull. She cried out, doubling over, hands flying to her temples as if she could physically hold herself together. It was like nothing she'd ever felt before. A white-hot agony that seemed to split her very atoms, that reached deep into the core of her being and twisted. Through the haze of pain, she heard Declan shout her name, felt his hands on her shoulders, trying to steady her. But he was fading, his touch growing distant, insubstantial. The world was fading, dissolving around her like a chalk drawing in the rain. And in its place, something else was rising. Something vast and ancient and hungry, its presence pressing against her mind like a physical weight. Something that whispered her name in a voice like the rustle of dead leaves, like the creak of a tomb door swinging open. Samantha. It breathed, and she could feel it, could feel the mask's power unfurling within her like a dark flower, its roots sinking deep. You have come so far, child, endured so much. But now, your journey is at an end. Now you will take your rightful place. She tried to resist, tried to cling to herself to the world she knew. But it was crumbling away, memories and sensations slipping through her fingers like sand. Her father's face, stern and distant. Her mother's lullabies, soft and sweet. Declan's smile, warm and achingly real. All of it fading draining away, replaced by a coldness, a numbness that crept through her veins like poison, a terrible clarity, sharp and merciless as a scalpel's edge. This was her destiny. This was what she had been born for, what she had been running from all her life, the dark legacy of her blood, the curse that had claimed her father, and his father before him, stretching back into the mists of time. She was a ray, and the rays served the mask, fed it as they always had, as they always would. With the last of her failing strength, Samantha lifted her head, met Declan's eyes, wide and despair bright in the gloom, tried to pour a lifetime's worth of love, of regret, into that final, searing look. Run, she whispered, the word a broken shard of glass on her tongue. Run, and don't look back. Bleh, please. Then, with a shuddering sigh, she let go. Let the darkness take her, let it fill her up, until there was nothing left of Samantha Ray. Nothing but a vessel, a conduit for the mask's insatiable hunger. She felt it settle over her face, cold metal searing her skin like a brand. Felt the rush of power, ancient and terrible, surging through her, remaking her from the inside out. In the distance, Somewhere far beyond the veil of shadows, she heard Declan scream. A sound of utter anguish, of shattering despair. The sound of a heart breaking, of a soul being ripped asunder. Then, silence. Stillness. An emptiness so profound it swallowed everything, even the memory of what she had once been. Samantha Ray was gone. Only the mask remained, eternal and ever hungry and in the darkness it smiled. In the darkness, there was only the mask. Its power thrummed through Samantha's veins, ancient and inexorable, reshaping her from the inside out. She could feel it, feel the way it burrowed into her mind, her soul, stripping away everything that had once made her human. Her memories, her emotions, her very sense of self, all of it sloughed away like dead skin, leaving only a cold, implacable purpose in its wake. To serve the mask. To feed it, as her ancestors had done for generations untold. To be its instrument in the world of flesh and bone, a conduit for its insatiable hunger. Distantly, 
Through the haze of shadows that clouded her vision, she saw Declan, saw the way he staggered back, horror and heartbreak etched into every line of his face, saw his lips form her name, a broken plea, a desperate invocation, but it meant nothing to her now. He meant nothing. Just another mortal, another mode of dust in the grand cosmic dance of the mask's eternal reign. With a sinuous, almost lazy motion, Samantha rose from the altar. The chamber seemed to pulse around her, the very air thrumming with the mask's dark energy. She could feel it gathering, building, a cresting wave of power that threatened to obliterate everything in its path. And at its center, at its very heart, was her. The Chosen One, the anointed heir to a legacy of blood and shadow. Samantha, please. Declan's voice cut through the suffocating stillness, ragged with desperation. This isn't you? You have to fight it. You have to well. Silence. The word left her lips without conscious thought, cold and imperious. You dare to presume? To question the will of the mask? She raised a hand and the shadows responded, coiling around Declan like living things. They lifted him off his feet, tightening around his throat, his limbs, until his struggles grew weak and his face began to model. Samantha is gone, she intoned, the mask's power resonating through her voice, echoing off the damp stone walls. Only I remain. And you, mortal, are no longer of any use to me. Her fingers twitched, ready to close into a fist, to crush the life from him as easily as snuffing out a candle. It would be a mercy, really. A quick death. A release from the suffering that was to come. But something stayed her hand. Some flicker of memory, of emotion, fighting its way through the iron control of the mask. A flash of blue eyes, warm and laughing. The ghost of a touch, gentle against her skin. A name whispered like a prayer in the depths of her mind. Declan dot ill. With a gasp, Samantha staggered back, the mask's hold on her wavering. It was like surfacing from deep water, like dragging herself up from the very bottom of a well of inky darkness. Every inch was a battle, every breath a war, the mask's insidious tendrils clinging to her, trying to drag her back down into the abyss. But she fought. With every ounce of strength, every shred of will, she fought. For herself, for Declan, for the chance at a future free from the long shadow of her father's sins. She wouldn't let it win. Wouldn't let it consume her, as it had consumed him. She was Samantha Ray, and she was more than the sum of her blood, her fate. With a cry that was equal parts agony and triumph, she reached up and seized the mask. Pain lanced through her white-hot and searing, as if she were trying to tear off her own skin. But she didn't stop, didn't falter, even as the shadows shrieked and writhed around her, even as the mask itself seemed to howl in fury and betrayal. She ripped it free, and the world shattered. A concussive blast of energy, of pure, unfettered power, exploded outward, throwing her back against the altar with bone-crushing force. The chamber shook, Cracks spiderwebbing up the walls, dust and rubble raining down from the ceiling. And through it all, through the chaos and the destruction, Samantha held on to the mask. Held it up before her, a talisman. A trophy of her defiance. No more, she rasped, her voice raw and shaking but filled with a steely resolve. No more blood. No more sacrifices. This ends now. The mask pulsed in her hands, its surface roiling with eldritch energies. She could feel it pushing at her mind, trying to find a crack, a foothold to slither back in and reassert its control. But she pushed back, harder, her will an iron bulwark against its insidious whispers. I am not your pawn, she gritted out, each word a battle. I am not your slave. I am Samantha Ray, and I choose my own fate. With that, she brought the mask down onto the altar, the ancient stone seeming to recoil from its touch. Again and again, she struck, pouring all of her rage, all of her grief and pain, into each blow. The mask screamed, a high, ululating wail that skirled through the chamber that threatened to shatter her very bones. 
But still, she didn't stop. Not until the mask lay in ruins, shattered shards of silver littering the altar like fallen stars. Not until she felt the last of its power dissipate, like a noxious fog finally lifting. Only then did she let herself fall, her knees giving out as the adrenaline and the agony took their toll. She slumped against the altar, breath coming in ragged gasps, tears streaming down her face. It was over. Finally, blessedly over. The nightmare that had haunted her family for generations, the curse that had claimed her father and threatened to claim her, broken at last. But the cost, oh, the cost had been so high. Declan, she croaked, remembering with a sudden sickening lurch. She forced herself up, ignoring the way her body screamed in protest, the way the world spun and tilted around her. He lay where the mask's power had left him, crumpled and still on the cold stone floor. For a horrible stretching moment, she thought she was too late. That the price of her freedom had been his life, snuffed out like a candle in the face of the mask's unholy power. But then, miracle of miracles, she saw his chest rise. A shallow, shuddering breath, but a breath nonetheless. A sign that he was still with her, still fighting. She half crawled, half dragged herself to his side, gathering him into her arms with a strength she didn't know she possessed. Cradling him against her chest, she let her tears fall freely, let them mingle with the blood and sweat and grime on his beloved face. I'm sorry she wept, rocking him gently. I'm so sorry, Declan. I never meant for this, never wanted you to be hurt. His eyelids fluttered, a sliver of blue appearing beneath his lashes. Sam, he breathed, his voice a thin, thready whisper. You, you did it. A watery laugh bubbled up her throat, edged with hysteria. I did. We did. It's over, Declan. It's finally over. He smiled then, a ghost of his usual roguish grin. Knew you could, knew you were stronger than it. His hand found hers, weak but warm, and he threaded their fingers together. Proud of you, so proud. Fresh tears spilled down her cheeks, but they were tears of relief, of joy. She had done it. Freed herself, freed them both from the mask's insidious hold. And she hadn't done it alone. I love you she whispered fiercely, bringing their joined hands to her lips. I love you, Declan Cross, and I swear I will spend the rest of my life showing you just how much. Ah, well, isn't this touching? The voice, cold and mocking, cut through the tender moment like a knife. Samantha's head snapped up, her heart seizing in her chest. There, standing in the doorway of the chamber, was her father. Richard Ray in the flesh, looking exactly as he had the last time she'd seen him. Before the accident, before the mask had claimed him body and soul. But his eyes, his eyes burned with an unholy light, a fever-bright madness that sent ice skittering down her spine. And in his hand, glinting dully in the gloom, was a gun. You always were a stubborn one, Samantha, he said, his tone almost conversational, as he stepped into the room. Just like your mother. Never could accept your place, your destiny. Samantha moved instinctively, shielding Declan with her body. Dad, how? How am I here? He chuckled, a sound devoid of warmth or sanity. Oh, my dear girl. Did you really think death would stop me? Would keep me from claiming what is rightfully mine? He raised the gun, aiming it squarely at her heart. The mask chose me, you see? Chose me to be its vessel its instrument in this world. And not even the grave can defy its will. His finger tightened on the trigger, madness dancing in his eyes. But you, you have defied it, Samantha. Rejected your birthright, your sacred duty. And for that, there can be only one punishment. Time seemed to slow, to stretch like taffy. Samantha saw the gun kick in her father's hand, heard the sharp crack of the shot, felt Declan tense beneath her, his cry of alarm and horror ringing in her ears. She closed her eyes, bracing for the impact, for the searing pain of the bullet tearing through her flesh. A fitting end, maybe, for the last scion of a cursed bloodline. But the pain never came. Instead, there was a clang of metal on stone, so close it made her flinch. 
Her eyes flew open wide and disbelieving. There, on the ground at her feet, lay the bullet, flattened and misshapen, as if it had struck an impenetrable barrier. And all around her, all around them both, a shimmering dome of light pulsed gently. A shield, ethereal but unbreakable, born of the shattered remnants of the mask. Her father stared, slack-jawed and horrified, as the gun fell from his nerveless fingers. Impossible. No, Samantha said, rising slowly to her feet. The shield rose with her, a shining corona of power that set her hair to dancing, her eyes to glowing. Not impossible. Inevitable. She stepped forward, and the light moved with her, inexorable as the tide. Her father stumbled back, hands raised, as if to ward her off, gibbering denials and pleas falling from his lips. But Samantha was relentless. With each step, the shield expanded, the mask's broken shards crumbling to glittering dust in its wake. Purified, transformed from a tool of darkness to a weapon of light. The mask is gone, she said, her voice ringing with a quiet, unshakable authority. Its power is broken. Its hold over our family ended. And you, father, you no longer have any claim over me. She reached out and let her fingertips brush his chest, right over his wildly beating heart. I forgive you, she whispered, as the light began to envelop him. And I release you. Go now, and be at peace. With a final anguished cry, Richard Ray dissipated, his form breaking apart into motes of shimmering energy. They swirled around Samantha for a moment, a glittering nimbus, before streaming outward, upward, vanishing into the ether. And then, silence. A silence so profound, so complete, it seemed to swallow the very world. Samantha stood amidst the ruins of the chamber, amidst the shattered remnants of her family's dark legacy, and felt free? Truly, wholly free, for the first time in her life. Sam. Declan's wondering voice broke the stillness. He had struggled to his feet, one arm wrapped around his ribs, his eyes wide with awe, and a burgeoning, incredulous joy. Is it, is it really over? Samantha turned to him, her face wet with tears, but her smile brighter than the sun. Yes, my love. Yes, it's really over. We're free. She ran to him then, throwing herself into his arms with a laugh that held the edge of a sob. He caught her, crushing her to his chest, his own tears mingling with hers as they clung to each other, two battered souls finally, blessedly whole. And there, in the heart of the mountain, in the place where it had all begun, Samantha Ray let herself believe, truly believe, in happy endings. But even as she reveled in her hard-won peace, even as she lost herself in the warmth of Declan's embrace, a niggling doubt wormed its way through her joy. A cold, creeping unease, like the brush of a spider's leg against her soul. For though the mask was gone, though its cycle of blood and sacrifice had been broken, something whispered that the story was not yet over. That there were deeper mysteries, darker secrets, waiting to be uncovered. Secrets that might make the horrors she had faced, the battles she had fought, seem like child's play in comparison. Samantha shivered, a sudden chill racing down her spine despite the heat of Declan's body pressed against hers. She pulled back just enough to meet his gaze, to see her own fears reflected in those beloved blue eyes. We won, she said softly, almost a question. Declan's arms tightened around her, his jaw set with grim determination. We won this battle, love. But something tells me that the war is just beginning. And there, in the shadow-drenched ruins of her family's darkest legacy, Samantha couldn't help but agree. The mask's reign of terror might be over, but what new horrors lay in wait? What fresh hells might be unleashed in the vacuum left by its destruction? Only time would tell.